Good day sa lahat ng ating viewers, most especially sa mga senior high school students taking General Biology 1 for this semester. Welcome po sa ating panibagong lesson na tatalahayin for this session. Hello, kumusta sa ating mga STEM students dyan? I hope na makatulong tong video na to sa inyong lesson. So for this session, we will going to discuss lesson 2, which is the cell types and cell modifications. So pakilala ko muna yung sarili ko. I'm Sir Kiko, your lecturer for this lesson. You may type your questions or clarifications in the chat box or in the comment section after the discussion. For the subcopy of the presentation, just message me in my Facebook account. There are two objectives for this lesson. First, classify different cell types, which is the plant and animal tissues, and specify the functions of each. And number two, Describe some cell modifications that lead to adaptation to carry out specialized functions. Before we start to our lesson proper, let's have a short activity. For the activity number one, we will going to identify each picture based on the hierarchy of biological organization. For 20 seconds, so ang gagawin lang ay alamin natin ang pagkakasunod-sunod ng biological organization na ito base sa mga larawan mula kaliwa pakanan. Okay, time's up. Let's check your answer. For the correct sequence of the biological organization, the first one is cells, second, tissues, third, organ, fourth, organ system, and last one, organism. And that's all for the first activity. So let's start for the lesson proper. So living things may be either unicellular or it consists one cell, or multicellular, or many celled. Most of the organisms you are familiar with, including yourself, are multicellular. Your body is also made up of many organs. Your skin, eyes, heart, liver, kidneys, and intestines are some of the organs that compose of your body. Organs are essential for adaptation and survival. But the question is, what are organs without tissues? Try to touch your cheeks. You feel some flesh. As you run your fingers gently over them, you feel tiny hair-like projections. Again, press your cheeks with your fingers. Something is hard underneath, and that is a bone structure. Slap one of your cheeks lightly and take note of any change on your face. So you will feel a warm sensation because of the red flash on your face. When you slap your cheek, blood rush to it and the pressure applied causes your blood vessels to emit the red coloring on your face. Question is, what is your cheek made up of? It is made up of cells just as the skin that covers the earthworm or the frog or the horse. These cells are grouped based on their types and functions to form a tissues. Let us elaborate and rationalize the distinctions of some concepts. First, tissues are adapted by the structure of their cells to carry on a particular function. Second, single-celled organisms are different from single cells that are part of an organism. Third, muscular tissues have cells with the most mitochondria while the blood has white blood cells with the most number of lysosomes. Our body is composed of four basic types of tissues. First, we have the epithelium. So, epithelium it occurs as sheets of tightly packed cells that cover body surface and line internal organs and cavities. So, the epithelial tissues are widespread throughout the body. They form the covering of all the body surfaces, line body cavities, and hollow organs, and the major tissue in glands. They also perform as a variety of functions that include protection, secretion, absorption, 
excretion, filtration, diffusion, and, sens and sensory reception. The second type of tissue is connective tissue. So for the connective tissue, there are seven functions. First, to join together the other tissues of the body like the tendons and ligaments. Second, for support like the trachea and the bones. Third one, to protect underlying organs like for example the skull. Fourth, for transport of the blood. Fifth, for the nutritive functions for the blood also. Six, for the immune function for the white blood cells or in, for the lymphocytes and for the last one for the storage sites and insulation or for the fat tissue. The third type of muscular tissue is muscular tissue. It helps cause movement and change in the shape of some body parts. Muscle tissue consists of elongated cells also called as muscle fibers. So this tissue is responsible for the movements in our body. Muscles contain special proteins called contractile protein which contract and relax to cause movement. For the second activity, we will going to answer these five questions. For number one, which type of tissue would make up the majority of the brain and spinal cord? Number two question, which type of tissue would be found in the epidermis? Number three, which type of tissue would form ligaments, tendons, fat, and bone? Number four, which type of tissue makes up the majority of the heart? Number five, which type of tissue would be found in the blood vessels and respiratory tract? I will give you one minute to answer these five questions. game begins in three, two, one. Okay, let's check your answer. For number one, the correct answer is nervous tissue. For question number two, the correct answer is epithelial tissue. Or to be specific, it is stratified squamous epithelium. For number three, the correct answer is connective tissues. For question number four, the correct answer is muscle tissue. And lastly, for number 5, the correct answer is epithelial tissue. Let us discuss more the four basic types of tissue. Let's go first with the epithelium. So the question is, what are epithelial tissues? What do the foreign shapes and arrangement of epithelial tissue suggest? You might have been heard a couple of times in our discussion that epithelial tissues, also called as the epithelium so it occurs as sheets of tightly packed cells that cover by the surface and line internal organs and cavities the apical or the basal surface of an epithelium is attached to the basal lamina so the epithelial tissues are named according to the number of cell layers they have and according to the shape of the cells on their apical or the basal surface 
So, these are the types of epithelial tissue. So, we have the simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar. We also have the pseudo-stratified columnar. And last one, we have the transitional. Let's try to observe the types of epithelial tissue. For the simple epithelium, it has a single layer of cells, whereas the stratified epithelium has multiple layers. The pseudo-stratified epithelium is single layer, but it appears stratified because the cells vary in length. Epithelial tissues are also named based on their cell shapes. So for the squamous, epithelial tissues have flat cells like the floor tiles. For the cuboidal, epithelial tissues have cube cells like dice. For the columnar, epithelial tissues have brick-like cells on end. Okay, so this table will provide you a framework for more information and reinforce the theme that the structure of each epithelial tissue is well suited to its function. For the simple squamous epithelial tissue, so makikita natin to sa ating uh, air sacs of the lung, blood vessels, and heart. For the stratified squamous epithelial tissue, so makikita natin to sa ating mga skin, sa vagina, sa esophagus, and sa mouth. For the cuboidal epithelial tissue, so yung makikita natin sa kidney tubules, sa glands, and sa surface of the ovary. While the simple columnar epithelial tissue, so this tissue is found in the digestive tract, in the gallbladder, excretory ducts of some glands. So this type of epithelial tissue is usually lined with microvilli, a type of cell modification that helps in increasing the surface area for absorption. And then last, we have the pseudo-stratified columnar epithelial tissue. So, it is found in the bronchi, in the trachea, in the uterine tubes, and some portion of the uterus. Okay, so for the connective tissues, the question is, what are connective tissues? What function is common to all type of connective tissues? So, like what we discussed earlier, so connective tissues help protect, support, and act as a binding material for organs and other tissues. Connective tissues may be grouped into six major types. So, we have the loose areolar connective tissue, the fibrous connective tissue, the adipose tissue, the cartilage, the supportive tissue, and we have the vascular tissue. For the characteristic properties and the structures through which they are found, for the loose areolar connective tissue, it is a soft and pliable tissue that acts as a packing and binding material throughout the body. So this uh, tissue can be found in the skin, organs, in the glands, blood vessels, and also in the peripheral nerves. For the fibrous connective tissue, uh, it is a linkage of muscles and bones. So it can be found in the tendons and ligaments. For the adipose tissue, uh, it stores fats or fat as food reserve, pads and insulates the body. So it also protects the skin and other organs and stores energy. So it can be found in parts with fat storage. Next is the cartilage. So it consists of chondrocytes that form a strong but flexible skeletal material. So this tissue is found in the ends of the bones, in the respiratory tract, sutures, ear, nose, epiglottis, and also in the intervertebral discs. 
For the supportive tissue, it consists of osteoblasts that form a matrix of collagen fibers embedded in calcium salts. So this, this tissue is found in bones. Then last one, we have the vascular tissue. It consists of a liquid extracellular matrix called plasma and form elements. So it also functions to transport substances from one part of the body to another and in for immunity. So this tissue is found in the blood. For the third type of tissue, so we have the muscular tissues. So for the question, uh, what are muscle tissues? Why are there voluntary and involuntary muscle tissue functions? So muscle tissues, also called muscular or contractile tissues, it consists of cells with protein filaments that help cause movement and change the shape of some body parts. So the muscular tissues may be grouped into three major types. So we have the cardiac muscle, the skeletal muscle, and the smooth muscle. Let's talk about the characteristic properties and the structures through which they are found. For the smooth muscle, so they are not straightened, so they are involuntary muscle. So they are found in the walls of the digested tract, respiratory passage, urinary and genital organs, and also in the blood vessels. For the skeletal muscle, so they are straightened voluntary muscle so they are found in the muscles attached to the bones for the cardiac muscle so they are also straightened but involuntary muscle so they are found in the heart muscle and last one we have the nervous tissues so we will going to answer this question so what are the nervous tissues how does the nervous tissue work and what makes up a typical nerve cell or neuron. The nervous tissue senses stimuli and transmits signals called nerve impulses from one part of an animal to another. It has a cell body containing the cell's nucleus and several slender extensions. So one type of extension called a dendrite. So it conveys signals from its tip toward the rest of the neuron. So another type is the axon, transmits signals toward another neuron or to a muscle cell. And that ends our discussion. So those are the four basic types of tissue. So we have the epithelium, the connective tissue, the muscular tissue, and the nervous tissue. And for the last part of our session, we will going to have an assessment. Okay, so for the instruction, we're going to match each tissue in column A with the organ in column B and description in column C by placing the right letters on the first two lines before each number in column A. So each letter option for the first line will be coming from column B, while the letter of your answer to be placed in second line will come from column C. So I will give you 5 minutes to finish this assessment.
I think you are done with the assessment for checking. So this is the key answer. And that ends our session for this lesson. So for next video lesson, we will going to discuss the cell cycle or the mitosis. So if you have questions or clarifications, you may type it in the comment section or message me in my Facebook account. Huwag din kalimutan mag-subscribe sa ating channel para updated tayo sa mga susunod na video lessons.